As we worship and celebrate through music and word, through singing and scripture on this fourth Sunday of Advent, let us come before the Lord in awe and wonder. As we stand before the mystery of Emmanuel, God is with us. May we marvel together at the holiness of God. May we be drawn to the Holy Spirit and to God's presence today. As we enter into these holy moments of worship, our prayer is that God will enable us to know something of Isaiah's experience when he encountered God as recorded in the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty. The hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. In the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul imagined the whole creation groaning in labor pains, awaiting for the full revealing of God's glory. He also wrote of how he, of how we, as people of faith, long and yearn for a full and complete culmination of God's salvation to be revealed in Christ. Paul envisioned a redeemed creation, a reconciling of all things through Christ, a salvation story that begins with the birth of Jesus. Long before Jesus was born, God's chosen people, the children of Israel, hungered and yearned for a deliverer, a savior, a Messiah. The prophets from old spoke of the coming of the Messiah who would come for the house of David. They also spoke of the one who would come to prepare his way. Luke's gospel records the birth of John the Baptist. His birth was announced to the priest, Zechariah. The angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah in the temple one day and told him that his wife Elizabeth would bear a son and that he was to name him John. The angel Gabriel told Zechariah that his son's purpose would be to make ready for the people and prepare the way for the Lord. Because both he and his wife were of old, Zechariah questioned how he could be, how this could be. Because of his disbelief, the angel Gabriel told him that he would be unable to speak until this had come to pass. Of course, it did come to pass. John the Baptist was born to Elizabeth. When he was circumcised on the eighth day, his father Zechariah regained his speech. And Zechariah was fill, filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke these words of blessing and prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has... Uh, from the prophets of old put uh, uh, the prophecy that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. 
Thus, we would be delivered and we would be raised up for he would raise up for us a savior from the people of David. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sin, by the tender mercy of God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, and we shall be saved, a light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day appeared publicly to Israel. Sorry. Elizabeth, John's mo mother, was related to Mary, the mother of Jesus. The angel Gabriel, who had visited Zechariah, also came to see Mary before John the Baptist was born. The angel told the young virgin that she would bear a son. She was to name him Jesus, which means God saves. Gabriel told Mary that her son would be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God would give to him the throne of the ancestor David. He would reign forever, and his kingdom would have no end. Mary went to visit her relative Elizabeth, who by that time was six months pregnant. When Elizabeth heard her greeting, the child leaped in her womb. Both Mary and Elizabeth were awestruck at the presence of God in their lives. These two women were blessed instruments of God's plan of salvation for the world. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months before returning home. In the birth of John the Baptist, the time came for Jesus to be born. It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. 
And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. But the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Christmas is a time of wonder and beauty, and the true meaning of Christmas for people of the Christian faith is found in God's redeeming work through Jesus Christ. Christmas is incomplete without Easter. For the church, the story of the cradle cannot be fully told without the story of the cross. And so the child Jesus grew. He was baptized by John, tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights before beginning his public ministry in Galilee. He called his disciples, teaching them and the crowds that gathered about the kingdom of God. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, raised the dead. Jesus proclaimed the good news of the kingdom. Jesus was and is God's good news for the world. In Christ, the kingdom of God may come near. Religious leaders and Roman authorities were threatened by Jesus' ministry and teaching. And so the more Jesus proclaimed the good news and embodied the kingdom of God, the closer he drew to the cross. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we wait. We join with all of creation in yearning and longing for that day when God will re redeem all things through Christ. And for a moment, let our minds drift to another scene in the story of God's redemption. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, beginning Passover week, Holy Week, Palm Sunday, on his way to the cross. The disciples brought the donkey and the colt and laid their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd brought their cloaks and laid them on the road, and others cut branches from trees and laid them along the road. And those who were going ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven.
hear these words from John's Gospel. Listen to how John the Baptist, son of Elizabeth and Zechariah, would come to describe Jesus. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is whom I have said. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. And so we worship today through this beautiful music and through this scripture, and we celebrate and give thanks for the gift of the Lamb of God into the world. We think of a lot of things at Christmas, but maybe it's very good that we do not let this season escape us without celebrating the fact that Jesus, God saves, has come to save us from our sins. He has come to give us hope. He is worthy of our highest worship and adoration. He is worthy of our best efforts as we try to live our lives in faithful discipleship. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace.
Let us pray. And so, gracious God, we offer you our best. We offer you our thanks. We come before you with singing and scripture, with story. We give you our lives. We thank you for this blessed season of waiting and anticipation, expectation and hope and joy and light. And we ask, O oh God, that through your tender mercy, you indeed may allow us to be vehicles of your good news in the world and help us to be people of worship, not only when we gather in our Sunday clothes, but throughout our lives. Help us to be people of worship and service and love and grace. And we thank you for anything good that we do. It originates in your goodness. And so thank you for allowing us to be a part of your work here on earth. We praise your name and give you thanks. In your holy name we pray. Amen.